now. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to uh, our devotional on this Saturday evening, the 2nd of May. So nice to have you with us as we consider God's word this evening. Uh, early in this coronavirus thing, I was in my regular Bible study and it came across the parable of Jesus about the wineskins. And it, it struck me as particularly appropriate in this time, uh, but I've always kind of wondered about it. And I found a writer on it who offered sort of a new perspective. Uh, this, the, it's out in all of the synoptic gospels, although a little different in every one. Uh, I'll read from Matthew, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. It's similar in Mark, and then in the Luke version of it, he ends up by saying, and none of you, after drinking old wine, wants the new, for you say, the old is better. That has always puzzled me. If we read this as Jesus saying, here was something new, the kingdom of God, and it was not going to fit in the old Pharisaical law that the, the Pharisees were holding, and so that this was going to be having to be something totally brand new, then why is he saying people like the old better? And in and, uh, close around this, in Matthew, Jesus also says it's like someone who brings out of the storehouse treasures both old and new. So this writer, Ian Paul, takes this up. He says, usually it is uh, interpreted as the kingdom is brand new and the things that the Pharisees, the old structures are not going to be able to hold it. But he says that that is a little uh, problematic in various ways. And then he says, also there's another way is that just kind of the old is, the old is bad, the new is good, but he says both are preserved. How is that happening? Uh, so he goes on to assume it this way, to interpret it in another way. He says the major problem with this new structures and religion interpretation comes from the setting of the passage within its narrative context, because it follows when the Pharisees were talking about fasting. But in, Jesus, in general, Jesus was not opposed to fasting. And so he says the idea, it's not about, what if it's not about new structures, what is it about? And he cites a writer of, from the Talmud about the time of Jesus, who talks about studying as a child, learning as a child, and uh, then learning as an adult, and that you might uh, learn, he who learns from the young, from the young Unto what can he be compared? He can be compared to one who eats unripe grapes and drinks unfermented wine from his vat. But he who learns from the old, unto what can he be compared? He can be compared to one who eats ripe grapes and drinks old wine. And then the rabbi says, do not pay attention to the container, but pay attention to that which is in it. There is a new container full of old wine, and here is an old container which does not even contain new wine. That comes from Elisha ben Abuya. Uh, who wrote in the Talmud. So he says, in other words, the parable is not about creating new structures or institutions, which surely themselves over time will become rigid as the old wineskins have done, but about people who are willing to receive the teaching about what God is now doing. Because he says, that's what the containers of Jesus' teaching are. The containers are the disciples themselves. We don't necessarily need to scrap the patterns created in response to earlier teaching, though we might be interested in reforming them. Much more important is whether, as people listening to this teaching, we enact the traditions we have received with flexibility, compassion, and grace. It was this that the Pharisees lacked. So what is the new wine God is pouring into your life at the moment? And are you being flexible like new wineskins in order to receive it without scorning the old thing that God did in your life yesterday? I thought this was an interesting way to 
to look at this passage and to consider it as we have obviously started new traditions, our new ways of doing things, and yet we don't want to sacrifice all that we have known before. And so I think he's right in that the key is, are we willing to be taught? Are we willing to be flexible? Are we willing to be molded into that new container uh, so that the wonderful message can get out in our time, in our day, in these new ways? Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the enduring word, your word that does not go out, does not return to you empty, but does what it says it was going to do and has done from time, the time that you sent it. We thank you that we may trust that. And so we pray that as we are in this time where we need to try things new and that we are learning new things, we pray that we will be flexible and that we will be malleable and that we will be teachable and that we will be able to take the wine of your kingdom, which you have given us so graciously. And in the containers of our lives, share it with the world in a way that can be heard in our time. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for being with us in our devotion time together and may God be with you this evening and bless your worship tomorrow. Amen.